Welcome to Sci Fi, the show where we talk about five scientific and technological innovations that happened this week. I'm Chris J. Kirk, and this week we'll be talking about discoveries of supermassive black holes, the origin of life, and more. Astronomers at NASA say they've found what creates supermassive black holes. A supermassive black hole is an object located at the center of most galaxies that has a solar mass approximately one billion times larger than our Sun. The finding shows that supermassive black holes form in seeds created in giant gas clouds with a solar mass of a hundred thousand times that of our Sun. By looking at two black hole seeds that formed about a million years after the Big Bang, we've confirmed that they continue to grow in size as they get further through time. Our previous understanding of black holes is that they were formed by traditional means with the collapsing of stars. With this new finding, the understanding seems much easier. A new paper published by the Scottish University's Physics Alliance takes a deeper look at the angular momentum and spin of photons. By sending white light through optical fibers and lenses, the scientists were able to create a corkscrew-like structure from the photons. By reducing the dimensionality of the light, more information can be compressed into the photon packets than previously understood. This discovery could make serious waves in the field of fiber optics, communication, and security. Engineers have created a new type of air purifier intended to remove pollutants from indoor environments. Called Molecule, this device works similarly to the new eco-friendly buildings that are coated in concrete, breaking down smog in urban environments. Printers, carpets, paint, and mold can all travel through your house's ventilation system and are classified as airborne carcinogens. This device uses light to stimulate a catalyst, capturing large airborne particles including bacteria, microbes, and spores. A similar reaction occurs in Earth's upper atmosphere, where water vapor reacts with inbound radiation, destroying pollutants and microbes. With this new creation, complete sterilization of indoor environments may become possible, allowing us to live in an age without indoor illness and pollutants. The National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine have come to a final conclusion on genetically modified organisms. Traditionally, GMOs are used in crops to create herbicide and pesticide resistant crop. The major controversy behind genetically modified organisms exists because of a lack of knowledge and a fear of the unknown. In a study conducted globally, it has been found that genetically modified organisms do not have any adverse effects on their consumers. Through this study, genetically modified organisms have become less taboo and hopefully, as a result, will allow for more leniency in the types of research allowed. A new paper published in Natural Geoscience has shown an interesting conclusion about the condition of the Earth, the Sun, and the creation of life four billion years ago. Along with the extreme heat from the initial formation and the bombardment from meteorites, the sun was extremely different during this time period as well. A bizarre paradox is formed when looking at G-type stars, like ours, during this period. Even though Earth was coated in greenhouse gases during this period, it would not be substantial enough to heat the planet to allow for liquid water to form because of the fact that the sun was 70% cooler during this time period. By looking at other G-type stars near us, we've seen that during their aging process, they experience extreme volatility in their solar flare activity, creating extreme explosions with a hundred trillion times the force of a nuclear bomb. Four billion years ago, our sun would have been having these explosions frequently, allowing for our planet to sustain a large amount of heat based off of solar flares alone. This large influx of heat from the solar flare activity would be sufficient enough to create heat for the water to form in liquid state. That's all for this week, and we'll see you next time on Sci-Fi.
Yeah, it's just as you assume, and it's nothing but these humans. We we'll like to blame mythology for everything they're doing. They pray for non existent gods to clean up the mess, but never take responsibility, just claim it's a test. See that religion you've been given is shit, and it's all poison. And it's partially the reason we bleed, and it's all poison. Your worldview is poison, and your outlook is poison. And I'd argue up, but the truth is it's all poison.